So this is how it goes. So the Philadelphia, so the Philadelphia Eagles currently hold the number one spot in the playoffs. But I want to ask you: So Jalen Hurts possibly could be coming back this week. And I want to ask you: Should it be? Should it be? It's time to come back. Should Jalen Hurts finally make his return? Hell yeah! Because, Hell yeah! Because now, Hell yeah, he should come back. Yeah. Look. The Philadelphia Eagles are now 13 and 3. The San Francisco 49ers are 12 and 4. Minnesota just lost to Green Bay now 12 and 4. But mm-hmm. the Cowboys could somehow still take the division. They could still take the number one spot. But the only way that would happen is if the Philadelphia Eagles lose next week and if the San Francisco 49ers lose next week, the Cowboys would have to win. If the San Francisco 49ers win it, the Philadelphia Eagles would just have to w- lose and the San Francisco 49ers would have to win. So this is a big important mm-hmm. week for the Philadelphia Eagles that they want to stay with that number one seed. If they want, it's a that huge one. week for everybody. Shit. Huge week all for everybody. Cowboys, Niners, Cowboys, Niners, and Eagles all have to start <clears> the starters. <throat> but I already heard your opinion. But let me let it be known. Why should they bring Jalen Hurts back this week? Why should the Eagles end up bringing him back when he has an injury? Why not just keep him in, keep him out until the playoffs start? All right, so. <laughs> So this is so so when the injury first happened, when I first learned about the injury, this injury, uh when I first learned about it, I it's funny, I had basically thought Jalen Hurts should set out the first game against the Cowboys, which he did. We lost, even though it was a great game. <laughs> then I was like, even though we lost, Jalen Hurts still sit out. Like yeah, yeah. this is the Saints. We got this, we got this. Same thing really ain't ain't nothing. Damn, bro, we lost against the Saints. Like, God damn, what happened? So now you had two weeks, basically two weeks and a half, and you still got more days because you know we still got till what Sunday to the uh, to the Giants game, and like they mentioned before too, how Sirianni mentioned Jalen don't heal like everybody else. So Jalen then had about almost three weeks, maybe a little bit less than a month to heal from his shoulder injury, which he still finished the game with and still was making throws. So I feel like he's healthy enough to still compete at a at a high level. Um, I definitely don't want that to be an excuse, like, you know, knock on wood. Like, if he don't play well, I don't want that to be an excuse, like, oh, it was his injury. Nah, I feel like he's ready. I feel like he's ready. I feel like he was ready last game. I just feel like they was trying to play it safe. Um, just thinking. I basically just – I feel like he didn't play last game because I feel like everybody in Philly, all of our coaching staff, I feel like they thought we were going to win this game, which we freaking didn't. Um, I think it was bad play calling, though. That's the reason why we didn't win. Um, also, too – Horrible, horrible play, horrible playing by Garner Minshew. He was, he wasn't really seeing the the field that well. Do a this game, and, like do a pick bro, six. Bro, that pick six was, back and won the game. Bro, that pick six was inexcusable. Like yeah. as soon as it left his hand, bro. Not even before it left his hand. I was like, bro, you you look at the slant, and why would you even throw it to AJ? AJ, if you go back and look at the play, bro, AJ didn't even, he didn't even like run more. the route, bro. You have he Lattimore didn't run right exactly. There. Yeah, Lattimore on him and. But Lattimore playing off, though, man, I think Lattimore playing like five yards off. But, look, A.J. Brown ran a weak-ass route. It didn't even like A.J. was even looking, going to – it, it didn't even like A.J. was anticipating the ball. That's what I'm trying to say. So, for Minshew to throw that ball, it was, like, was kind of like miscommunication in a sense. But, um, but, but yeah, my opinion, my opinion on Jalen Hurst, I feel like he should play this week um, just because this is, a, this is a big game. This is a division game. This is a game that we should win. But – um, it's possible that we could lose because it's a divisional game. Um, our two losses out of our three losses this season have been to division teams, um, Cowboys and the Commanders. So <clears throat> I feel like this is he needs to Jalen Hurts needs to play this game. Um, this is this and also too, if we win this game, this can give us you know our number one spot and we can have the bye week so that can give Jalen Hurts a you know extra week to kind of you know rest up. Also too, I feel like he should play so he won't be so rusty, even though. We're for sure in the playoffs, no matter if we get the number one, number two seed, number eight seed, seven seed, we're in the playoffs. But I understand where you're coming from because I was agreeing, like, maybe he should just rest up, like, no matter what, it's playoffs, we're going we to, you know, just rest up so we can be good at full strength. But sometimes, I was going to mention that uh, earlier, too, with the Packers and the Lions, you got to watch out for teams like that, bro, because when you got teams that's really been fighting and, and really – and really, like with you know, with all that momentum, they can carry that shit into the playoffs and be and they can streak right along and be beating shit number one, number two seeds, you know. So you gotta be careful with with players and teams like that. That's that's been uh that's been you know playing this whole time, you know, rather than resting their players. Because I feel like when you rest your players, or when some players get rested, especially quarterbacks, you tend to get a little rusty. So, and also too, my bad. Also too, 
uh, I want to comment on Nick Sirianni. I feel like the reason why we've been struggling is because we we mentioned it earlier in the year, it's always important to have a backup quarterback. But when you don't have a backup quarterback who who kind of compares mean, to wait, your starter, hold on. it kind of it kind of kind of messes it up. Do you huh? not do I not recall you saying that Gardner Mitchell is a great backup? And if Jalen Hurts go out, Gardner Mitchell should be able to get it done no matter what. I'm not really worried. No, no, I agree. I quote you, man. <laughs> no, 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 I agree. I agree. I, I agree. I'm not saying that. I definitely feel like he should have got it done. But I'm saying, too, when you think about it, um, I know you see it. I mean, you, I don't know you see this, too. Jalen Hurts is, you know, the type of course, the type of system that we run and like the type of offense that we run. Minshew can't run that offense, so I feel like that kind of puts our offense, it kind of staggers our offense. It kind of, like, you know, kind of I give our offense to be ice cold in a sense. Because um, then now we got to stick to a true passing offense, like a pocket passer, rather than Jalen Hurts being that zone read, able to get outside the pocket. So, for example, if we had a backup quarterback like uh, Tyler Huntley or like a, I don't know, like a guy that can run, you know, that, that would have been a way better option for us, in my, in my opinion. I feel like Gardner Minshew would have been a backup quarterback, a better backup, like somewhere like in New England or something, to where he can literally drop back and like you know throw the ball rather than make zone reads and stuff like that. That's not really his game. And uh, I wanted to say this was I want to say yeah, this was the first time that the Eagles were stopped with a quarterback sneak. You know, it's always been Jalen Hurts. He's been exactly, able to easily, bro. Yeah, he's always been able to easily get up in there. He's a faster quarterback. He has stronger legs, and he's gonna bring that push and that power, trying to break up in, break that hole, break that for that first down. And bro, I'm so glad you mentioned that. I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm so glad you mentioned that. So that play specifically pissed me off so much, bro. Just because it's like, bro, you if you go back and look at the play, nigga, the defense knew it was coming. They knew it. They seen it. And that's what I'm talking about, play calling, bro, as a coach. It's like, bro, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? Like, you see the defense. They First of all, it took forever. Like, when Jalen is in, Jalen already knows, okay, we're going we gonna to do the sneak. Bro, when that, when that play happened, it took them, like, five seconds to even, like, contemplate going for it. And then when they went for it, he bro, Gardner was so not – Bro, it was weird, bro. It was weird as fuck. Like, he was, like, he stood up. Then, it, like, he was, like – like, he was all soft. Like, he was soft as fuck, bro. Like, he wasn't even like he was, like, really trying to go ahead up, bro. He was literally, like, he stood up. And then he didn't reach the ball over to, like, the very end. Like, it was so weird, bro. Like, that shit pissed me off so much. And I'm like, bro, as a coach, like, like as a coach, like, bro, I just see the Chiefs do this shit all the time where, like, just say Mahomes is in shotgun. And then they have motion Kelsey behind the center. And then they have sneak it to Kelsey. And that nigga take it in. You feel me? Like, they could have did something like that. It's all about play calling, bro. Like. You gotta keep the defense off balance. Like when you, it's like, what do you think? What are you looking at? And you've seen it this week when Tom Brady ended up playing against the Panthers. He had a quarterback sneak at the, I want to say at the end zone. He dove straight into a center's leg. He got so <laughs> low, damn near to the floor. Could have, you know, get a tore center legs up. But you know, you got to get up in there. There's only one way. No, and that's Tom Brady. The center Tom and the Brady's a perfect example of that, bro. Perfect. He instead of Jalen Hurts. Tom Brady, even before Jalen Hurts this year, Tom Brady was a prime example of especially the quarterback sneak. Yeah, with Jimmy Garoppolo, bro, they don't, they they don't, they don't even, bro, they don't even need to think about it, bro. They don't even need to think about it. Like they know Tom Brady probably, I'm pretty sure he tells them every time in practice when it's fourth and one, when it's fourth and inches, third and inches, get to the line, get to the line. We about to sneak it. Like it's not, it's no thought. It seems like every other team got to think about it. Like oh, look, can we, should we do a sneak? It's like so what simple. are you thinking about? It's simple, bro. It's so fucking simple. So, bringing on to that thought, now that the Eagles, they lost two straight. They lost to the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Now they lost to the Saints. Looking at it now, is it easy to say that Jalen Hurts is the most important piece to the Eagles? Or is it easy to say that maybe he isn't as important as everyone says? Is he really that MVP candidate? Is he really, Are the Eagles really just as good only because of him? Um, no, I, I don't say, I, I wouldn't say that just because we've seen why the Eagles are, I didn't say we've seen why they're, they're good, but we see, we see, um, you know, other strengths like our D line, crazy amount of sacks. Um, you know, like, so for the Cowboy game, we, we played really well on defense. Well, defense line wise, offense played pretty well too. Um, and then with the Saints, our defense played lights out again. So I wouldn't say Jalen Hurts is just like the most important piece, but I feel like, 
on offense, he definitely is. Um, just because, like I said, you know, with the Minshew situation, when you got Minshew in there or a quarterback like that, you literally got to switch up the whole offense. You can't, you can't really, you can't, you don't have the threat of the quarterback running the ball, which is a huge threat. And you mentioned it too. Teams like the 49ers, um, who have trouble with mobile quarterbacks, that could be an issue. You know, like when you play a Jalen Hurts, like, damn, now we got to worry about Jalen Hurts running the ball outside. So then when you focus on that, you know, when you focus on that during practice, then you got, Running backs like Miles Sanders and freaking um, my guy, uh, uh, I can't, Kenneth Gainwell, who the lanes open up. So I feel like that type of offense is really, really hard to stop for real for any type of defense. No matter if you're number one, number two defense, number three defense. When you got a quarterback that's, that can literally run like a running back and who also pass like a, like a you know, like an actual elite quarterback. And then actual has the smarts to like you know make those type of reads, whether to hand the ball off or to keep it. I feel like that's a huge factor. So I feel like when it when you, when it comes to that in our offense, I feel like that that's very important, and I think that's the reason why we had so much success. Um, also, too, I just feel like because we've been doing it all year long, I feel like we're so accustomed to that type of play, um, like that that type of play calling. I feel like that's the reason why we've been um, like you know downhill as of right now, just because we don't have that type of quarterback. So to you, you think you think Jalen Hurts' ability to run is more special or more, I guess, it gives you guys yeah. a more a stronger ability to win than just pure talent, more than he's that good? You think it's more his legs than just his ability to play quarterback? Is that a, is that um, a fair way to say it? I don't like the way you said that, but <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> that's kind of how you broke it down, though. That's basically I know. No, how cause we we, like we all we all no, nah, cause we all see that he can pass the ball. Like, bro, when you throw the ball to certain to like Devontae and AJ, we see the ball placement. It's like, damn, it's like that's that's elite. That's elite accuracy right there. But no, I agree though. I do agree. Like, I definitely one hundred percent agree. Like, I feel like because he can run, um, Jalen Hurts, if not number one. Um, he's definitely like the top three running quarterback in the league so far as like, you know, rushing yards. So that means a lot, bro. Like that means a lot, no matter if it's college football or NFL. When when as a defense, when you gotta prepare for another running back that can throw it and run it, that shit it just it just puts so much pressure on the defense. Like it just puts a lot of pressure on you. So yeah, I would agree though. I feel like because he can run so well, I feel like that's the reason why we've been able to like do so good.